Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 908. And the topic today is apology without change is manipulation. And that is a statement I posted, actually an article I posted yesterday, and it's got a lot of response. So I thought I'd speak more about it on from my own perspective and how I can advise you on this. And I did frame it as a pre-Thanksgiving advice or pre-Thanksgiving guidance, because this is how you're going to lose out in relationships, especially your family ones when you go home for Thanksgiving. So stay tuned for that. Before I do that, let me choose myself so you know what I'm about and you know get a sense of what I'm doing on these talks. So first of all, um, welcome to my broadcast. This is my daily chat. My name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't seen from around the broadcast anywhere. Hi Charles, nice to see you my broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, book for singles and, singles and couples, men and women. I help women create balance in love and life and business primarily uh, because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's also what started these talks or inspired these talks back in 2016, so almost three years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. This talk's for everybody, by the way. It's about men and women because it's really a, a thing about how you can get out of the trap or how you can stop being manipulated by other people. Um, and again, I posted the article yesterday. You can read about it there, but this is an little, um, my perspective on the whole thing. And because this is Thanksgiving week, you may be on the way back to see family or may excuse to see family, and you may have some of this stuff show up about Apologies without responsibility. And it's the thing, the state, the, the title again is, is um, apology. this is by the way, is episode number 908, just to catch you up. <laughs> and I'll tell you at the back end where you can find the replays, you can watch them more if you want to, if you want to binge watch them over the holidays, feel free. Um, and the title again today is Apology Without Change is Manipulation. And what that literally means is if you say I'm sorry and don't do anything about it, there's no energy, there's no shift. And the thing about it is, is that sometimes we think and I'm going to flip script for a moment to the idea of forgiveness, is we think somehow that when we forgive somebody, we give them the right to do it to us again. And the thing is, that's not the case. It's not forgive and forget. And in this context, it's not take their apology and forget they ever did it. Because if they don't change, you might want to remind them. But more to it than that, and this is the family dynamic stuff especially. It happens in relationships a lot too. But for many people, it's a family thing because <coughs> families are set in their ways, to be blunt. So if you're going home to see family this week, this is particularly important. If you're in a long-term relationship or if you've got friends of yours, in quotes, that have done stuff to you that have wronged you, that have hurt you or done something that was inappropriate and haven't fixed it, they've simply said, oh, I'm sorry. But you can tell even in the tone that it's not, there's no heft, there's no responsibility, there's no accountability. And that's the piece I want to talk about is that saying you're sorry has responsibility with it. And if you're in a place where you have perhaps wronged somebody else, listen up. And if somebody's wronging you, listen up as well, because I want to make sure that if you're the, the um, protagonist, that you'll have a way to respond differently and change how you do things. And if you're the, I don't say victim's the wrong word, if you're the recipient of this, how you can change it as well. So stay tuned for both. So first of all, if you are the protagonist, if you're the one who's actually apologizing for things you've done but not changing anything, it's time to look inside. Because the thing is, if you're in a situation, if you're a, an, an awake person, you're aware and conscious, so to speak, but you keep doing something where you find yourself apologizing to other people, actually, <laughs> let me preface that slightly. I know some people, friends of mine, who are in the personal growth business, not business, but in the personal growth path, they've, they're, they're awake and aware, but they keep apologizing, saying like, they do something, they go, I'm sorry, like, like almost like a recoil, like, instead of saying, pardon me, or something, which is really what they're saying, they say, I'm sorry. So, first of all, the word sorry is being very cheaply used, <laughs> to be simplistic about it. When you apologize or you say you're sorry, it's, this, this is a common thing, in our, our, I guess, in our, in our um, culture, that saying sorry is so easy, it's flippant. Just throw it out there, say, oh, I'm sorry. And you go ahead and do the same thing again. And this is the thing people do, is they think when they say sorry, it's like, get out a jail free card, energetically speaking. But really, it's an excuse not to do anything about it. And my biggest pet peeve, one of my biggest pet peeves, we've got a few, <laughs> let's be clear. But one of my, my biggest pet peeves is people who will say they're sorry for doing something, they'll apologize, they'll even make it lamenting so that you feel the weight of their the apology. And then two days later, they're doing the same thing again that they were doing before, like ignoring their apology. And worst of all, ignoring you. That's why it's manipulation. And that's the piece I'll speak to now, just to give the whole statement. So. If you take someone's apology and they don't change, you're letting them manipulate you. That's what the statement really means. And if you're doing that, this, is, this gets into the territory of gaslighting and, and, and sociopathic behavior too, because if you're in a relationship with somebody who is constantly apologizing to you, 
but they're not changing their behavior, it may start to feel like they're basically trying to drive you crazy. Now, not necessarily intentionally or consciously, but they're not dealing with the full circuit of the, or the, full, the full loop of the requirements. Apologize for something you did, change the behavior so you don't do it again. Because if you keep apologizing and not changing the behavior, you're basically staying in the same place and not changing. And that is not caring, it's not loving, it's not, it's not, it's not, um, it's not effective ultimately. So here's a little teaching point if you're a protagonist of this, is if you say sorry too much, notice that. Because for some people, it's almost like as, as simple as going, um, I didn't mean to do that. Not like I did something wrong, because this is the thing. There's different scales of apologizing or, or being, a, oh, sorry, because it can be something as simple like you just did something like, oops, didn't mean to do that, versus where like, oh crap, I really messed somebody up. There's a spectrum. So you can be on the spectrum wherever you are on this point. I want to make sure you get the point though about when you apologize. And I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not immune to this either. I've said sorry in places where I just didn't think about, oh, am I really apologizing? And we're just saying something like, excuse me, or um, pardon me. Now I come from England, we say pardon me a lot. But that framing is more to simply make somebody else aware of your presence or of your doing something. So if you're working through the crowd and you're saying, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm sorry, excuse me, sorry, excuse me, you're using the wrong word to be blunt because you're apologizing for something you haven't done, <laughs> frankly. And this is another fault, by the way. People use the term, keep using the word sorry, when it doesn't fit what they're doing. What they really should be saying is something the lines of excuse me or get out of my way or I'm coming through in a nicer way. But the word sorry doesn't fit there, so stop using it for that, please. <laughs> use pardon me or excuse me or coming through or mind your back or whatever that, I mean, I use a bunch of words when I come in through crowds with you know equipment or something. So that's one part, which is really being clear about using sorry in the right place. Secondly, and this is the other part that, this is, okay, let me back up a second. So when you use that first one, that's kind of cheapening it because you're throwing it out there. The other side of cheapening it is when you make an apology and you really need to be apologetic and saying you're sorry, but you don't do anything about it. Where do I want to go with this? Oh, okay, I've got two directions. I'm just, if you haven't seen my talks, by the, by the way, this stuff downloads and comes through in certain ways. And sometimes I see like a fork in the road and I'm like, which one do I take? Um, let me start with the one that Fo shows up first. Okay, all right, continuing. <laughs> Welcome to my mind. Um, some people are under the belief, and again, I'm saying some people because I don't want to point any things at anybody or label anybody or presume anything. So some people, it's just a generic bucket and put people in. You can jump in the bucket if you want. Some people <laughs> have a feeling that when they really get to the point where they're sorry, that's enough. Like they don't have to do anything else. Now, for most, for, I'm not going to keep using that word. It doesn't work. If you're in a situation, if you are in a situation there, let's make it personal where you find yourself apologizing, but you're not making any different, you're not making different choices, you're not changing what you're doing or, or re fixing the behavior you did, then you may be missing the cleanup stage. What re-apologizing is doing, in my understanding, my feeling is, is you're letting somebody else know that you feel accountable for what you did or didn't do that was the wrong thing. So when you apologize to somebody for what you didn't do or what you did do, what you're telling them is, I realize what I did and I shouldn't have done that. That's what it really means. So that person who got, was dealt that too will basically feel like, okay, at least they understand now. Because if you do it obliviously, you won't be apologizing, of course. If you just do it, you don't care. You won't even think about apologizing. You just steamroll them. So when you first say that you're sorry about something or you apologize, what you're really doing is saying, just so you know, I, got, I didn't do the right thing and I shouldn't have done that, for example. That's the main sort of, for me, the thrust of apologizing like whether you cheated on your partner or whether you um, crashed their car or whether you just simply didn't buy the milk when you went to the store. I mean, there's a, again, spectrum on this. So recognizing that when you are in a place where you're becoming accountable to the other person is when things are at a choice point. Meaning that you've now got to the point where you're more vulnerable perhaps than you were before with the person in front of you who you dealt the blow to, so to speak. This is where you get to make a choice. Do you d then make a forward motion to fix what you did so you don't do it again, whether it's a change behavior, whether it's making a new arrangement with this person so they don't have, you don't have to deal with it again, or maybe you do you go see a counselor or a 12-step meeting or whatever it is that helps you course correct the behavior, or do you revert back 
going, okay, I've done my apology, I can go back and do it again. Because that's what people do. Not so much they go back and say, I'm going to do it again, but they think the apology is enough. And that's the mistake. Another mistake, there's a few in here. So again, you know, apology without change is manipulation. So apologizing doesn't get you out of the spot of trouble you're in. Course correction happens. You know, in, in, in the court system, it's going to fit. It's like when your court system is maybe you plead guilty, which is basically saying you're sorry for what you did. Um, it's, an, it's a rough arrow. Let me see if it goes anywhere. So then you have some sort of punitive price to pay for what you did. That's the behavioral change. That's the shift. That's the, the change of what you do now from what you did before. So you're going to do it again. Unfortunately, our legal system doesn't work quite that well, but that's kind of the idea of it. So actually, that's, that's an idea where we need, that's how we can change the, sorry. I should have downloaded about changing the legal system. That was an interesting thought. <laughs> Course corrective behavior after the guilty plea. Okay, if someone out there is an attorney wants to run with that, go for it. I'm not holding, a, account, I'm not holding a, a trademark on that. So let me get back to my point. I just want to hold it on track. When you apologize for something you didn't do correctly or you didn't, or you did wrong, in quotes, where you affront the other person, you hurt the other person, you wounded them, whatever that was, emotionally or any other way, being willing to then say, how can I do things differently? And this is the thing. You can actually ask that person, if it's not obvious to you, to you what you should do differently, to get from them some guidance. Now, if that person's upset with you, it may not be the right time for that. But when you apologize and you really get it clear that you are sorry, say to them as an opportunity, if they're in the middle of upset, saying, I'd love to talk to you at some point when you're in a, in a place where you're more, more um, whole, so then we can talk about how I can do things differently. Because maybe it is something in your relationship with them where you basically don't know what you did wrong, but you know it didn't work, so you apologize. And then you say, look, I'd love to, f to find out what would work better for you, so I don't do that again. Because that, again, is an intention to change the behavior. Because again, otherwise it's manipulation. So learning this paradigm of if you make an apology, how you've got to be willing to change, either make the change yourself or ask for guidance from somebody else to get, make the change as well, so you don't do that again, is the way to come back to wholeness and the way to come back to integrity. Otherwise, you're basically in manipulation because you're telling them one thing and then you're doing something different. That's manipulative. So if you're the recipient, let's switch to the other side now, if you're the recipient of somebody apologizing to you because what they did or didn't do to you, you have a choice. You can accept their apology, and you don't have to, by the way, and then if you do accept their apology, you can also be willing to offer them, if they're willing to hear, ideally if they're apologizing, they are willing to hear, what you'd appreciate them doing differently next time so it doesn't happen again. I mean, this is nuts and bolts stuff, but people don't do that. So now take everything I've said and then put that on top of your family dinner on Thanksgiving. Because <laughs> it's going to be interesting. So my, my encouragement to you is if you need to make amends, and this is part, I mean, this really is part of 12-step, but it's not my, I'm not in 12-step, but I know that framing, is to make amends by apologizing to somebody for something you did badly, wrong, incorrectly, whatever it was. Maybe you were in a, an addic addict to something, so you did something without realizing it, and now you're clean, and you don't want to apologize. That's why that's there. So you can make a different choice and then have different behavior. Apologizing, excuse me, that was on the, that's on the protagonist side. So let me switch to the recipient side just jumped over there let me come back to this one so again if you're the recipient of this and maybe it's at Thanksgiving as an opportunity where someone's apologizing to you for something they didn't do right now there's two things going on here they may be apologizing for something that you realize doesn't make any difference to you anymore because it's like it was ancient history or maybe something where they had a whole agenda about it thinking they really screwed up but you didn't even notice it in which case it's a moot point that's a whole different conversation but if it's something where when they apologize you feel it because it's something you felt wronged by you have a choice. Are you willing to let them off the hook? Are you willing to forgive them? I mentioned forgiveness earlier. If you're willing to forgive them and let them free. Now, as I said, apology without change is manipulation, meaning that if that's the case and you do let them off the hook, but they don't change, that's where some course question needs to happen. So this framing I'm giving you, this understanding hopefully makes sense, is that when you are in conversation, relationship with somebody, whether it's family dynamic, personal relationship, business relationship, being in a place to apologize. First of all, let me say this as a secondary piece or a, or a Cliff Notes version, uh, no, altitude, there we go, altitude, put my hand up there for some reason, from a place of altitude. 
His apology does not make you weak. Let me be clear about that, because some people feel like they can't apologize because it makes them feel weak. Inaccurate perspective. Apology makes you free when you do the work. So all the stuff I've talked about so far are keys to the door to open up to freedom. And if you're willing to do that, then you can be free in your relationships that way you feel like you've wronged somebody. And again, if somebody wronged you and you're the recipient of that, hopefully they do it for you. If they don't, you gotta be willing to walk away. Because if you're the recipient of somebody who apologizes and then comes back and does it again, and apologizes and does that again, and apologizes and does that again and again, and repeat and repeat and repeat, you're either, you're either a, um, a glutton for punishment, or you're not willing to do the work to free yourself. Maybe you're so caught up in the relationship of love or duty or something else, where you cannot leave and you're gonna put up with it. I certainly hope you don't. I hope you step free. I hope you're willing to walk away. If they will not change, and you've talked to them about it, they will not change, they apologize, but keep doing it. Your only option really is to walk away if you wanna, if you wanna maintain your sanity and your health. Now that's a bigger th ask in some cases, I know, because some family dynamics, it's like you don't wanna walk away from the family, but you need, feel like you have to because you never get the peace of mind and the wholeness of heart from an apology. So I'm gonna invite you to look at this and play with this yourself because this is a big conversation to have, I know. Especially if you're going back for, to family for Thanksgiving, to have this thing where there's an apology that needs to be made, either either made from you or made to you. And you wanna make sure that followed up with that apology is a change of behavior, a change of relationship, a change of um, intention so you don't have to deal with it again. It's not easy, I know, but it's, this is some of the deeper work that I work with my clients on to understand how to frame it because when you do learn this structure, your self-esteem increases, your, your, your self-care improves, and your relationship with other people changes because basically you're in integrity. And when you're in integrity, that's when life really starts to transform. <sighs> wow. I think I've just downloaded a bunch of stuff. Hopefully this has been of use to you. This, is, this has been a, a um, been on my mind for a couple of days that I posted the article yesterday, I think it was yesterday. Yesterday I posted the article about this. You can read it, it's on my wall from uh, yesterday. But I want to speak from my own perspective on the whole thing about that framing of how to do the apology and make a change of behavior or a change of way of being so you are in integrity and you have it clean. I'm thinking if there's any links I want to provide in, my, in the comments because I do provide links every day usually as a call to action and I see what's here. So first of all, I will put a link in the comments so you can reach out and talk to me because if this is something that's bugging you and you're not going to work through it, um, I'll put a link to have a chat with me where you can reach out to me and have a conversation because you may want to get some support. This is in the way of you having more love in your life, a way of, in the way of you having more connection in your life, and a way of having more healthy relationships in your life. Take me up on an offer for a complimentary chat. So on my wall, on, in the comments will be a link for a chat with me. So that's one thing I'll put in the comments. Secondly, because it's that time of year, well, it's, it's that time of year every, year, every time of year, is I'm gonna put my self-love meditation in there because if you're not loving yourself now, and you're not really owning, honoring your self-love practice before you go to home for Thanksgiving or during or after, you'll need to do it. So I'll put the self-love meditation in the comments. Um, also, just so you know ahead of time, um, I'm gonna put a post on my wall probably later tonight or tomorrow, but if you are feeling like you want a quick touch in, a quick um, tune up, a quick one, a one session call, for Thanksgiving I'm offering single coaching sessions rather because I normally offer just two, uh, three months or six months coaching packages, but if you want a single session just to get you like switched to get some understanding, some clarity and direction for the holidays. I'm offering that as of now through the end of Thanksgiving weekend. So reach out to me for one of those. I don't have a link for that. You just message me over social media. So that's up to you to reach out for. So those two links in the comments plus an invitation to check out for a, a single session. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do it at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week, seven days a week. Um, although Thanksgiving day will be different, I think. And there's a couple of days it's gonna move and next week will be as well. But right now, normally, 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page where you can find my broadcast live interactive, um, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. You can watch me here. The replays, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, you've been missing out. I've got 900 broadcasts, more than that now. Um, you can find my replays on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. You can like my page and watch them there, although not all of them show up because that's Facebook's habit. Or you can go to my YouTube channel, where I do back them up, and on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, so youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. You can go there and you can watch excuse me, you can subscribe to my channel and there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine and you can watch them all there. Um, YouTube's easier because you can scan through titles or do keyword searches and find stuff so you can find the one you want to find. And um, I'm here to help. So again, links in the comments will be a chat with me for understanding how to work this. Secondly, 
um, my self-love practice and contact me through social media if you want to have a single coaching session. I'm offering that special just because of the time of year. So with that, um, I think you're doing everything I need. I appreciate being with me and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast or you want to share it with your friends, feel free to do that. Um, let me know if I can support you. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.